So what happened is that uh, Las Vegas took the forms and architecture of medieval fo and, and, and fortified cities and ancient fortified cities and applied them to gaming. Uh, if you look at the public and private realm in Las Vegas, the black is the public pedestrian realm, the red is the private pedestrian realm, you can see that effectively what we have is a boulevard very much a la Paris in the 19th century um, that is connecting a series of medieval cities that don't connect. And so what you have here is the reverse of what happened in Paris. We had a house mon city and we've had a bunch of medieval villages to that city rather than having a bunch of medieval villages and plowing boulevards through it. Um, the most recent of, of these is city center. Um, and as I said to the students this afternoon, the, the, the name of this, uh, this project is an oxymoron. Um, there is nothing less city-like about this project um, in the world. This is actually really the most fortified of urban fortresses um, and is, a, is a, a fortress center rather than a city center. Um, if you look at the scale of it, um, the um, slide on the left shows this footprint of city center. This um, lower left shows the footprint of downtown and how much of downtown it would take um, to build city center. Um, the slide on the upper right in red shows what is the Fremont Street experience, which is all the casinos in downtown. And you can see what the scale and size of these projects are uh, compared to what is a traditional urban environment. And understanding the scale disjuncture between normal urbanism and gaming is an incredibly important thing to understand. Um, if you look at the red here, this is the, that's the private pedestrian realm. Um, Las Vegas Boulevard is at the bottom of the slide, and you can see those two very little red necks um, that connect the uh, pedestrian realm of the fortress to the pedestrian realm of the fortified city. Um, and I will assure you that that little entrance acts very much like a gate. Um, and while there's no armed guards at it, there might as well be. Um, we were hired to rethink Las Vegas for um, Harris Entertainment. Um, we were hired 40 years after um, Denise Scott Brown and Robert Venturi wrote Learning from Las Vegas. Um, we are urbanists. We have done many urban plans and we've done many places for people. And as I say, we were a very odd choice for Harris because um, our expertise is not gaming, it is human behavior. And they were interested in the intersection of human behavior and gaming, and that's why they hired us. Um, they hired us to do a master plan for all of their holdings, which is about 350 acres at this point, about two miles of the strip. It's a huge project. It'll take 10 years to build. But what we concluded after analyzing all the development in Las Vegas is that, oh, as a parenthesis, you always want to build what nobody else has built in Las Vegas. You want to be new and different. Um, what we concluded is that what was new and different in Las Vegas was true urbanism, that there were a lot of fortress-like cities and that if you really wanted to uh, create a different environment, it would be an open city where people could behave in human behavior that had the equivalent of Main Street in Disneyland or the Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica or Lincoln Road in uh, Miami, um, where pedestrianism and social interaction were valued and created rather than dismissed and, and discouraged. Um, we took a look at our um, uh, medieval cities that we wanted to connect, and we took a look at our vacant ground, and we started to look at where we could create points of access, um, where we could create porosity, both in major and minor fashions, and how we could create connective tissue, much as one would find in Paris, where you walk through the medieval city and you come to boulevards. So we were very interested in, in the questions of surprise and delight that one does find in the combination of a, um, a, a European city that, that has um, 19th and 20th century interventions. Um, the stars on that are our weenies, um, which is a Disney term for places of excitement, uh, which draw you into the site um, and make the site more permeable. Um, this looks at the whole site in terms of development parcels and um, how those um, in pedestrian environments begin to relate to development sites. Our first project for them is a half billion dollar project, um, the goal of which is to reset the table in Las Vegas and to try and turn Las Vegas into a pedestrian oriented environment, to try and turn Las Vegas into a real city. Um, Venturi and Scott Brown maintained that uh, Las Vegas was about the sign and about the automobile. Um, the studio I taught at Yale was called um, Learning in Las Vegas. 
uh, rather than learning from Las Vegas. And the point of the studio was to try and see what Las Vegas had to learn from the rest of the world 40 years later. Um, we'd looked a lot at, at pedestrian environments. I mentioned some of them earlier in this and look at what made for successful ones. Um, and what we did and the exercise my students did are identical. Um, from here on in, um, or actually some of the slides prior to this were some of my students' research, some of it is ours. But these are, are four great walking streets throughout the world. We then took our site, which is a very odd-shaped site, um, and tried to look at how you would begin to draw pedestrians off Las Vegas Boulevard and create a pedestrian environment and a pedestrian-friendly environment. Um, this is the first floor plan um, of our project. Um, you can see the sight lines and the, the, the large slight sight line, that sort of a slash to the center of the slide, is a desire line of getting people to walk uh, about a third of a mile from the boulevard to our first major weenie, which is that observation wheel. Um, and what we've done is to create a progression of piazzas, paths and places to draw people into the site and to create a much more interactive environment with the buildings, the gambling, the restaurants, the entertainment, the retail, and really look at how you would make a place that people want to be. Um, this is a model um, of the project uh, and a rendered elevation. Um, these are a couple of the facades uh, of the individual project. And by having that slanted um, angle of vision and by drawing people through the project with certain buildings that interrupt it and a series of uses, we believe we can draw people through it um, with the wheel as the final destination. We've used both traditional Las Vegas architecture as well as Las Vegas architecture for the from the 50s and 60s to make what feels like a truly indigenous place. Um, these are more of the facades in the project. This is walking further through the project. Again, further down until you get to the wheel plaza. Um, this is what we envision the elevations look like. We believe that um, Las Vegas, like Hollywood, is, is something everybody has an image of in their mind. Um, you go to Hollywood and it's incredibly disappointing. You know, you think it's glamour and movie stars and it's really wig shops, bars, and parking lots. Um, you go to Las Vegas and you expect to have all this hype and activity. Most of the neon has been torn down. Um, it's in parking lots about 15 miles from town. Um, you get all these modern skyscrapers. Again, you think you're in Dubai. Um, and we wanted to capture that image. And uh, we've hired a series of neon artists to help our tenants um, create really exciting signage. Um, and that's the project. Um, and we do believe, and Harris believes, $500 million worth um, that this is the future of gaming and the future of Las Vegas. And um, there's an important transition between, which occurred somewhere around 10 years ago, between the word gambling and gaming. Um, it used to be called gambling, it's now called gaming. There's a reason. Um, it used to be that 90% of revenues in Las Vegas were gambling derivatives and 10% were other things. The proportion now is 60% um, is non-gambling and 40% is gambling. Um, and gambling has become, or gaming is a form of entertainment. Gambling is a bet on making money. Um, you can't make enough money gambling, but you can certainly make enough money gaming. It's much easier to go after people's entertainment dollars than it is their highly speculative investment dollars. Um, and I think that Hera's view is that by centering on the entertainment aspect and drawing people into your entertaining aspect, you can convert non-gamers to gamers and you can get more gamers as opposed to gamblers. So I give you this little talk because I think it frames the issues that you all face here in Cleveland and it raises all of the issues that I think you ought to be considering. Um, and I don't have any opinion as to what site you should or shouldn't choose and what you should or shouldn't do. All I can tell you is what the likely effect of specific choices are because we have studied it so extensively throughout the world at this point that this is actually something I know something about.